It's, so I think that's going to count as everybody's Tara story for the week. You can take your shot now. Tara is sick tonight with either a spider bite or MRSA. The doctors don't know which. Yeah, when it comes to MRSA, there's nothing worse. So I, I really sympathize for her. I've had it many times now. I just have MRSA living in me. It is awful. And the second she described her symptoms, I was like, "That's MRSA. That's oh, fucking shit. MRSA." Yeah, it's yeah. it's a uh, it's a antibiotic resistant version of the staph uh, bacteria. Uh, uh, well, they have found uh, antibiotics that do work on it, and that should help for a while. But if she's got the IV, and she's she was describing it on online, it looked, sounded real bad. It sounded real bad. Yeah, it, there was la there, the word lancing was involved. Yeah, I've done that. It's it's real bad. Saturday. I noticed this lump on my leg. It was like that big. Kind of hurt. It was red. So I was like, all right, I'll keep an eye on it. My sister's like, yeah, it's probably a spider bite. Okay. There was no fucking way I was missing an Afghan Wakes concert for it. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just wear leggings under the dress I'm wearing. Which was the right choice because it was an amazing concert. Unbelievable. So Sunday is looking a little worse. It really starting to hurt. I'm like, all right. I have my sister look at it. She's like, all right, you know, if it's not better tomorrow, go to the ER. Monday. Now, this is two days later. It's this big. It's red, and it's huge. And I'm like, well, okay, clearly something's wrong there. So I go to the ER. They look at it. They give me a dose of IV antibiotics. Send me home with oral antibiotics. Tuesday, I take the oral antibiotics. It really hurt. Like, I'm limping at this point. Because I have, the, it's like expanded and now, and it's lumped, like it's like raised two inches from my, so, you know, I have a legit huge lump. By Wednesday, I could not walk and it had formed a black abscess the size of the original lump. I had a black Lupus. abscess like this big. Lupus! So I went back to the ER. <laughs> ER doc comes in, looks at me for, I swear, like 10 seconds and goes, yeah, we're going to admit you. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I've never parts been admitted of, to when, the hospital before. When parts of you start turning black, that's a good time to admit you to the ER. Yeah. So, admitted me. I, I saw so many doctors. I have, I now have to follow up with a plastic surgeon, mm -hmm. a wound care specialist, mm -hmm. an infectious disease specialist, like... So, finally, you know, this is getting worse and worse and worse, and it's oozing, and it's disgusting. So, finally, this surgeon comes in to look at it, and he goes, yeah, it's going to have to be lanced and drained. And he says, well, we can do this one of two ways. He said, you just had lunch, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, we bring you to the OR. You're going to have to wait till tonight. Or we could just give you a local and do it right here. And you were in such pain, you are just like, fucking cut me open. It's like, well, okay. So they threw some morphine in my IV, shot the whole area of my leg full of local, and sliced my fucking leg open. And that's when I heard the worst two words I have ever heard in my entire life. Necrotic, Necrotic fat. fat. I didn't even know that was a thing, but it sounds amazing. That's a thing that can happen to that's you. That's a band a name. Fat in your body can go necrotic and die and turn black. That is a screamo band name right there. <laughs> so they clean all the crud out. Now, basically, and then they took a culture of the crud they took out of it, forgot to tell me, by the way, you have MRSA. Yeah, they just, they're all coming in in the contamination gowns. Yeah, all of a sudden, everybody's coming in in gowns. And I'm like, okay. So I asked someone, I'm like, why is everyone? wearing gowns all of a sudden is something going on yeah there's some kind of precaution okay and i haven't left my room so i don't know if there's a precaution on the floor right the day i the day i was admitted they had the local news there because there was an ebola scare locally <laughs> so it makes better what's going on finally like 10 o'clock at night i asked the night nurse listen all of a sudden everybody's wearing gowns what's the deal with that and she goes oh well you're under contact precaution what does that mean She's like, well, because of the MRSA. And I'm like, I have MRSA? Yeah, nobody told you that? <laughs> no. No, nobody, nobody mentioned that I have MRSA. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. Thanks for the heads up. MRSA is, oh God, 
what's it? It's a MRSA. It's something antibiotic resistant staff. Resistant yeah. staff, whatever. It's basically a staph infection that is resistant to your usual round of antibiotics. The good thing for me is I'm allergic to penicillin, which is the usual round of antibiotics that it's resistant to. So they hadn't even put me on that anyway. I was already on the, the serious shit. But so basically, the long and short of it is, it looks like somebody took a melon baller to my leg, like two inches below my knee. Yeah, when we say have, it, in, when you say it's one point five inches, it's not just across; it's also deep. deep. It's about an inch and a half deep. So now my daily nightmare, my daily hell, is I have to get this wound irrigated, packed, and dressed every day. Which means there's a bunch of antibiotic-treated gauze stuffed into this bloody, disgusting, raw hole in my leg. Which hurts. Uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't so much hurt. Really, the leg doesn't hurt that much anymore. But the thing is, because it's antibiotic-treated, it tingles pretty much all the time. Like, you know that feeling of when you pour peroxide on a wound? Yeah, that, that bubbly kind of... My leg feels like that all the time. <laughs> on the inside. An inch inside my leg tingles all the time. Weirdest shit ever. Most people have to do some amazing drugs for that sensation. But once a day, I have to go and someone has to pull all that crap out, which is a horrible feeling. And then sometimes if I'm really lucky, they poke at it with a Q-tip, which is incredibly painful. Or like today, the doctor ripped off all the fresh scabs with forceps. Then they irrigate it. They pour salt water through it. And then they stuff more of that stuff in. And then wrap it all up. And that's my life right now. At least for... there's. I keep asking them, like, how long am I going to be doing this routine? And they're like, well, you know, it has to fill from the bottom up. And I'm like, yes, I understand that. How long is it going to be red and oozing and, like, really painful if someone breathes on it? Well, we don't really know. Okay. We don't know. It's a mystery. Us here hope, with medical science. Like and banned from my room because I'm infectious. Aww. Which my sister was so sweet. Like, she was so worried about offending me, telling me that. She's like, I'm really sorry. I'm like, he's a nine-year-old kid. Like, this happens to him. They chop off his leg. That's so He I, might I, think that's awesome for like 10 minutes, but it really He's isn't. offered to dress the room for me every day. Aww. He watched them clean and dress it the day they discharged me, and he was actually disappointed that the hole wasn't bigger. Eight-year-olds are amazing. A hole in my leg the size of a ping-pong ball was not enough to impress nope. this little boy. So And they only had Shasta cola. <laughs> <laughs> but you sent me oh, lovely no. cookies and made some poor baker write, sorry, you're infectious on a cookie. Well, you know, I've got... I, <laughs> Which a lot of the nurses got a kick out of. Like, people would keep coming into the room and go, does that say sorry you're infectious? <laughs> Like, yeah, it does. I have some your friends. I got really cool flowers that were sculpted to look like a puppy. <clears throat> I got a weird bear that sings, You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings, because Dan kind of made friends with the gift shop lady, because he's far away, so he would just call the gift shop and be like, send her something cute. So I got a little bear that sings, You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings, which Bridget is not impressed with at all. Um... But yeah, Pat, today, because my insurance isn't covering the visiting nurse care that I'm supposed to have every day to dress this wound, so we're figuring out what to do. He's like, I could do it for you. I have a pocket knife. I'm a scout. I'm like, yeah, no, no thanks. You're not covered on my insurance, Pat. I'm like, I, I, I love you. You're a sweet boy. You're out you're of... Not, Pat, you're, you're not out, touching the hole in my leg. Pat, you're out of network. I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're out of network. So, so now, now I get the whole nightmare of insurance and... The giant bills that are about to come, and however many months it takes for the hole in my leg to fill in, because I'm going to have a hole in my leg for a really long time. And the plastic surgeon tried to convince me that I'm not going to have a scar, and I'm like, buddy, there's a hole in my leg. You just cut a hole in my leg. It's an inch deep and an inch across. Like, there's going to be a scar. Well, I actually went to the doctor today, and he said it's progressing nicely, but it's still... Like an inch deep in one spot. Yeah, so I'm tell, still... tell, tell people how they determine this. This is great. It's very scientific. Yeah. It's very difficult. So what they do is they take, you know, one of those long Q-tips with the wooden handle. They take one of those and they take the end that doesn't have cotton on it and they poke it 
in your wound until it stops. They poke it with a stick. And then they pull it out and they measure the blood. It's a dipstick! They use yes. a fucking dipstick! They, they dipstick your wound to oh. see how deep it is. And then they measure it. Oh, yeah. Only it's they, blood! They literally poke it with a stick to determine how deep it is. Um... So I'm still doing my zombie, zombie apocalypse field dressing every day, or I have to stick a syringe in it full of sterile water and irrigate it and then pack a bunch of stuff in it and wrap it up. I have this very funny doctor. I don't know what kind of accent he has, but he's really funny. He's like, oh, it looks wonderful. And I'm like, okay, it clearly doesn't look wonderful. It's a hole in my leg. But I appreciate your optimism. <laughs> you have a weird definition of wonderful, and I don't want to see your browser history. But he's a wound care specialist, so this is the same guy when I was in the hospital. He came in to see me just as they had served me my breakfast. And he said, oh, don't let me interrupt your breakfast. Keep eating, keep eating. And then opened up the thing and started, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> uh. But that's what he does, so he doesn't care. But uh, so it's good. It doesn't really hurt. It itches like crazy. That is good. And, itching itching and, you know, means it's it's not going to be a hole for much longer. Cute skirts are pretty much out of the question for the foreseeable future. You can get around that. I told you, I, I gave you that scarf suggestion. That would work. I bought that so would... many cute pairs of tights for fall. <sighs> now you have a hole in your leg. Now I have a hole in my leg. And like my, I can't wear my skinny jeans because they're too tight for the bandage. My whole fall wardrobe is blown, basically. <laughs> Priorities. I kind of live in yoga pants right now. <laughs> I was supposed to wear a shorter skirt because I had these awesome stockings with bats all over them, but then a hole rotted through my leg. Could have like tied like or you put like a bat symbol over it or knee pads or something. Well, no, not. Knee so pads. I got a longer skirt. Oh. Which allowed me to wear a flat, so <laughs> wasn't all bad. Yeah, but you could have you could have like tied a scarf, even though if you had a hole in your leg. Besides, you had a hole in your leg. It's very Halloweeny and also very Batman. Well, yeah, Nella dressed as poison ivy and told me to try and make it look venomous and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not putting makeup on my leg hole. <laughs> nope, <laughs> had enough problems with it. Leg hole has become almost a character on the show in and of itself. <laughs> It is getting better, although they gave me this new packing, and I do not like it. it my, my old packing was strips of antibiotic-treated gauzy stuff. And, you know, you cut off like a six-inch strip, you stuffed it in there. This is little squares of, like, cottony stuff that's apparently treated with silver? Silver colloid, yeah. Yeah. But it has the texture of, like, insulation. So imagine all day insulation rubbing on your viscera. All day. There's probably a website dedicated to just such a thing. It feels so weird and gross. And then sometimes, if I'm really lucky, it just fuses itself to the wound and I can't get it out. The word fuse and wound should not be... Those, those words don't belong in the same sentence. No, they don't. And they're like, oh, they just spray it with some water if it kind of stop, sticks. And I'm like, no, that doesn't work. They should be in separate zip codes. It's, it's part of my person now. Yeah. I'm going to gradually turn into this weird silver-treated insulation-like stuff. Let's talk about my leg hole. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we start the show now, apparently. Let's gross you out for ten minutes. <laughs> Let's well, play what's grosser than gross. Well, you and don't, then do horrifying news stories. Well, you and don't, maybe, if you're really lucky, there will be a kitty. You don't have a leg hole anymore. It's gone. Mostly. I mean, yeah. he, that doctor fucking tried to make a new one. But you're almost all better now. He took tweezers, giant tweezers, and was like, well, there's nothing left. Well, there wasn't! <laughs> there wasn't a minute ago. Stop trying to make leg hole happen. Yeah. And then he ripped a bunch, and like, you know, part of the process is he rips off all the scabbing. Well, then I guess he was feeling it, so he just started ripping off skin, and I'm like, I need that. 
<laughs> Are you sure? I really like to keep it. Like, look, I like you too. You, you're a great doctor. You seem like a good. Let's just have lunch. <laughs> like, you don't gotta give me. A, you don't gotta keep this wound going. So I'll come see you. Like, let's let's just get lunch sometime.